The tasks complete the challenge posted on this HoneyNet Scan26. Before you start this lab, please read this please report. Once you complete this lab, you need to complete the Inside your report, you need to write or record all the tasks here. Write a report about the process. You complete the tasks in the description. Key screenshots are needed as evidence is suggested to organize the content following the steps described in this uh, demo. So there is a demo. And then here you see the major steps in digital uh, forensics. Identification, identify the infected system, check the hashes of the archive and the image. Image addition, acquiring the disk image or partition of the infected system. Identify a image partition file system in the normal access to see whether you can access it normally. Once you have this image to the data recovery and analysis, try to recover all the digital or corrupted data from the disk image. For example, find the image details and allocate the directory entries, file data extraction, file data carving. Then write your report, write report about the evidences you collected, tools used, techniques uh, exploited, combine all the evidences and reconstruct crime scene if possible. There are six questions listed in the challenge. You need to answer these uh, six questions. Now let's go to this uh, challenge described here. Scan. And six. This challenge is a continuation of scan of the month 24. We have done in our project one. And in that first challenge, you have to decode and an analyze a floppy disk recovered from the drug dealer Joe Jacobs. And your mission is to now analyze the floppy recovered from his supplier, Jimmy Jungle. And also missions have to be yeah, this is the when the challenge comes out. Yeah, let's uh, go through these uh, descriptions. And I also you can see the results and uh, some submissions. Very nice submission. You can check this uh, submission as a reference solutions because uh, you when you check this one, it's uh, these uh, materials. They are quite old, but they are still very useful today. Here in this uh, scan of the month 24, the mission was to, uh, the challenge we want to do is the same as that one. Now the first step, we download the floppy image and uh, check its, uh, check its uh, checksum. And after you analyze this uh, image, answer this, uh, these six questions. And you can see a demo here. You need to read the place report first. Yeah, the, you need to read the place report before continue. So it's a same link. And here is a demo, or you can consider it as a solution. The tool is used and how to set up. Some uh, quick uh, hits, file analysis, image details, uh, allocated directory entries, analysis, uh, and uh, data extraction, file carving, or data carving. Then you come to this, uh, put it together to make a report to describe the evidence you have collected so far. Here, this question, the solutions to those. Uh, six questions. And we will use the latest version of these tools.
And now let's create create a folder that contains all the stuff. We are going to uh, collect today here. That's the lab 06. For this one, first download the image, right? Save link as go to my lab 06 right here. Then I go inside this uh, folder. How do I check it? Uh, hashes, MD5 hashes. First, I would like to extract the image, extract here. Let's extract to a subfolder, scan 26. Inside this uh, folder, just the image is uh, contained. So now we want to find the MD5 hash of this file and the data. And the data image, right? Here you see for SHA one short file, but uh, we didn't see a... Now we have this stuff, we didn't see that MD5. So how could we find the MD5? We need a tool, right? I think we downloaded a tool called uh, hash GUI. So what is the uh, hash GUI? Or is it called a quick hash? So we downloaded this uh, quick hash. Quick hash GUI. Can use this uh, quick hash to find this empty file. Now I want to Add those uh, files, select a uh, file, select. The files are inside my documents, lab06. One is this uh, zip file. And uh, the other one, here you see that you can compare this uh, MD5 hash code with the hash code stated here, right? C8E2109B. C8E2109B, so you can compare, see they are the same. Then I check the image. Here yeah, is the image E9C7, E9C7, 0A74, 0A74. So the integrity is good. We use this uh, quick hash to find the M file code or the image and the zip file. Now next, uh, we want to do the data recovery, right? Yeah, how do we do the data recovery? We can use this one as a reference. Here, the first one set up is to check the hash code. Now, for the file analysis, we can use the autopsy or the sluice kit to do the file analysis. Let's uh, use both tools. First, uh, let's use that uh, autopsy. When you pay attention to this version, it's uh, much larger than the one in the reference. Okay, we want to create a new case, right? And we give it a case name. Let's call it SLT26. Scan of the month 26 and the base directory is a folder I created today. Lab 06. 
we would like to go to this scan can six. Come next, we give the case num number. When you work for a company, you, they have some rules how to write your case number, right? We would like to just put it into the date. The examiner, you need to put your name, your first name, your last name, your phone number, email, and the notes. Notes you can see it's a, say it's a digital analysis on the scale of the month 26. Okay, my machine is uh, quite slow. You may check autopsy user manual, whether there are some options we can adjust to make the quicker. So we choose the disk image and we am aware. Click next. Now the image is the, the one I just downloaded today. Right? Documents, tab 06, scan 26. Oops, uh, this SOT 26 is the one created by autopsy. So we need to choose all files. This scan 26 is the image. You can put the MD file value here, then it will compare for you. So we can check the empty file once more. We put it here. Now for the ingest modules, because this image is quite small, we can use most of these uh, tools. But, uh, Let's uh, deselect one and uh, see what I, what industrial modules do we need? For certainly the, the fuel, the quicker, right? We want to do some, uh, photo rack recover. Okay, I think it is a uh, interesting file identifier correlation engines because we are trying to recover those files. Okay, now let's uh, click next. And you can see the progress here, analyzing this one. To check this status. No file set will not be executed. No file set will not be executed. Here you see it's uh, completed. When you check the image, you can see the sector size and the total size in bytes. You can find the information about this uh, image. Right? You can see it's a uh, tax value of this image. But it didn't give us a good page. 
in this page. It didn't give other sector. Maybe sector is better. Sector size. Okay, now what we are going to do, we want to recover the files. So inside this scan, you can see we, we have two files the deleted, so can be carved. In this unallocated data space, it has a uh, look like files over there, the orphan files. Yeah, when you check this stuff, we, it looks like we have two images. No documents, no executables. And you come to here, check the file size. Deleted files, totally we have two. And uh, okay, I think uh, these are the stuff we have. Oh, we can extract these uh, files. Right? They're all here. We select them. Here you see an image here. And this BMP, it looks like they are similar. So we can extract these two images. Right click, extract files. It will be saved in the export folder and your case folder. And this one, when you check it, you see it looks like JFIF. It looks like the uh, image, but uh, it does not show up which means some bulk or corrupted. So maybe we need a file carving or data carving to find it. Here if we extract to see what we get, we get a unknown file. But we totally we extracted uh, three files with this uh, autopsy. Then can I go to that folder Not zero six, go to this uh, folder to have a look. Here the export, yeah, we see a JPEG. So this is a JPEG. And uh, this is BMP here. It looks like a map, maybe they are doing, use this map, doing transactions to find the location to do transactions, right? And for this unknown file, it's a one four two four kilobyte. I don't know what it is. And from this hex data, it looks like it's a JPEG file, right? Yeah, you see JFF. So it means some box may or missing. This is the one we used the autopsy to retrieve the files, but the image details, here you check the image details, check the images, so you can find the description about this image. Here, this image, we have a fat table, fat one, fat, this is the fat one, this is the fat two. It looks like these fat tables are cleared, they're all zero. Right? And often files, and no often files, MBR, this uh, master boot record, you still see some information, fat tail. You can check this uh, master boot record. In wider system disk, disk error, and so on. So you can use the MBR specification to analyze this uh, MBO. Call the files, uh, get the files here, just show us zero. this is the information about the image. You see the file table, and it looks like this, uh, this uh, image is uh, cleared or formatted. And you can find that location for this uh, set of tables, so root directory and the data area. Here, how could you find it? We have size when you go through this stuff. You can 
it looks like we, we don't have more information here. For example, how do you find out where they start, where they end here, for example, which sectors. Then we can resort to the command line tools. Inside this folder contains this image. You press your shift key, right click, open a power shell. Then inside this PowerShell, we can run those commands, right? CMD, we can run those sluice kit command. Now, those sluice kit command, the file system, we use FS state, right? FS state, followed by this uh, image name. We omitted uh, those uh, lots of options. You may check the help how to su supply those options. But from here, you can find the information, the file system, image details, uh, OEM name, volume ID, volume label, file tail root directory, and sectors before file system zero, total range, how many uh, sectors, Result zero put sector is a MPO. The fat zero is uh, allocated from sector one to nine, and so on. Data area root directory here, cluster area here, and also you can find the cluster size is the same as the sector size. You can check here. Success class, uh, total class range, and so on. Now, how could we uh, find uh, the file information in, with the sluice kit? The sluice kit, uh, we have a uh, tools called F. Uh, I don't remember. Let's go to the sluice kit website. Inside is a uh, documents, help document, documents, command line tools. This is tool overview. You can find this uh, file system layer tool, FS state, the file, file name layer tools, FLS. We can list allocated or delete files in directory. Right? We can use uh, FLS to analyze this uh, scan 26. It will list us this MPO for one, two, and uh, all the files. Not much uh, useful uh, information. Now, if we can use IRS to find the, the metadata structure and the contents in a pipeline, pipe limited format, I LS followed by this uh, scan 26. You can check the information based on this one. Class, host, device, start time. We don't have uh, any uh, node information here, right? So it, which means this uh, disk is uh, formatted destroyed. Uh, what could we do with the sluice kit? Sluice kit, that is a nice tool called TSK Recover. We can use this one to see how many files we could recover, right? We use a T, TSK Recover. How to use this one? We specify these uh, parameters. Let's follow this uh, precise syntax, this concise syntax to, uh, to do a recovery. TSK recover 
for the dash we work with for port and uh, e recover all files. We know the file system type, it can be detected, so we don't need to specify this stuff. Maybe we can specify the image is raw. Set size, set offsets. We need to specify directly to save this uh, output. We can call it a TSK recover. Then followed by the image name of step directory dash D is, a, is not this one. Is there or none? Image, after the image, we specify the output DR. So the output DR, we specify the like, uh, let's say, T, TSK recover. Right? Specify like this. First, and uh, again, I didn't stress so the error output. Uh, let's see how many how much information can be recovered with this TSK recover. Files recovered zero. The doping of files in directories, so it will find nothing. Let's specify a folder and a surprise to have, have a look. JSK recover. If we want to specify uh, surprise the arrow. Now the device. Where is the quarter mirror in Windows? Maybe uh, we, we need to uh, ask Google to work, to confirm this. File recovery is zero, so we, we didn't really recover any files with this uh, TSK recover. So it looks like uh, we need to resort to some file calling tools. The nothing was being shown in this file content section. And you can check this stuff. For example, it says this file type sector or sector 33 was JPEG because we see that the JFIF had a value. And also the unallocated uh, entries, you can use this uh, command to check uh, allocated uh, directory entries. Let me use ILS, specify the file system type, file tail. I think it can be scanned automatically. Scan 26. You can see the information there a little bit uh, quite different. This is an older version. Slow scale. Uh, we use the newest, uh, latest version, slow scale. We get so many uh, informations. So you need to check this uh, manual to explain what does this number mean. So far, with the uh, With the autopsy, we extracted two files, right? Now let's, uh, here to either use a data extraction to get this stuff. 
keyboard search mode on top of and I extract an uh, allocated button. The name, file name may be different. It will find a stream password. Yeah, using a keyword search. Or in Linux, you can use this uh, command to find all those strings. But in autopsy, how could we find our own text? We can check the module. Run in, in just the modules. To select the word, to find the text, we check this uh, keyword search. Keyword search and uh, specify all this stuff to see whether you can uh, find these uh, things. Right. Embedded file extractor, let's see whether we can find any uh, files like this, deep or uh, doc, docx, and so on. Email, poster, try to find emails. Okay, this uh, I think is good. We select three more and uh, run it. And you can, uh, okay, it's uh, finished. Now from that, uh, We need to type some keywords from the email. We don't have any emails. So it looks like, uh, but the keyword search, what can the keyword do have? If we just search uh, any, uh, we want to show any strings, what strings, how do we do that? Manage list, you can, uh, Manage a keyword list, their settings and associated values put here. String extraction to extract the strings from various languages. General stuff, you can go through these settings and see whether you can get some interesting information. If I just uh, click uh, search, here in this keyword search, regular expression, I don't want to search anything, right? You don't stop to search anything. In order to quite certain if there is a directory where only a no single expression patterns are supported. So how do we specify the regular pressure in this uh, autopsy? We specify a story that does not recognize. Store in general regular expression, which means uh, we want to search anything, right? So we need to specify something. How about our word? Oops, this statement, uh, I don't know how to specify this uh, expression for autopsy. You can check autopsy, regular expression search, or autopsy regular, regular expression. Go to its uh, document. You can also check this uh, cheat sheet. Here in this uh, keyword, if we want to search anything, regular regex match. Did you see anything here? I didn't find a 
I want to find all this stuff. It looks like uh, it'll return the keyword. Here, grab this sheet. You will supply a store, but it uh, does not work. So you need to check the menu, how to use it. If we find a substring, like um, PW password, then you will find uh, something here. Uh, PW help John Smith something keyword preview. So you can see some information from here. PW equals help John Smith's address. So maybe you, we are interested in to find all those uh, text. It looks like uh, these texts they show up in this uh, file. So that is one way to show all the text. Here we find uh, the one keyword PW. We can go through to find some other interesting uh, text. Right? I think uh, to find all the te text, we click this uh, image. Here the text is not uh, available. Okay, I chose all this stuff. This text does not show. Here's all the stuff. It looks like when you create a file, we use text, it will show up some uh, text. But uh, that image, the whole image, the text, uh, we create text. And text, it does not show up. All the strings, so you can see all the strings. Of this image, you cannot uh, click all this stuff. We need to choose either these uh, code files or unallocated uh, data. After you choose them, then you can find all the strings. And this is how we find uh, some keywords. And then look similar to this one. Now we want to uh, recover that uh, image, that, uh, that unreadable file. How, how could we extract that unreadable file? And follow the, the when we find that PWX help, we also get this information, right? And with the, Hex editor with a hex editor, for example, our WX hex editor. You can search for the string to find which sector contains this string and the offset within that uh, sector. The sector get offset with a WX hex editor. Search in the string, then you can find this information get offset sector and the original sector. Now we want to try uh, using the carving to see whether we can use this one to recover some files, right? For example, that unreadable file, whether this uh, one can help us, this uh, data carving. Foremost, we can use it like this. Now this foremost is a, uh, do we have for most Windows version for most? For most Windows. Is a Linux tool, so I, I think you may Google to see whether you can find. If not, we can go to a Linux machine to download this foremost. Here is the source code for Linux. Okay, for this foremost, 
can go to Linux to, to see whether we can recover that Android image, Android data file. And here you can check this one, you can find a picture. Oops. What this picture looks like? It's here. So this one we already recovered with with the autopsy, right? Here we find some password, but uh, where could we use those password? We had recovered so far, we call two maps that show a hideout, finding number four and peer trail. And the, the main of the disk was this one. Here, the only suspicious result was the password, which has not been used yet. So you may suspect that uh, this image used stenography to hide, to hide some other information. So we can use step detect to see whether we, uh, whether it contains some invisible information. Here actually you see the recovery with the foremost we recover with the autopsy. If we use this ACE with this uh, stack detect, detect, detect a file, it has other information, then we can try to uh, retrieve that hidden file. So you can follow this, uh, this one. Now we want to download that uh, tool, step, detect. Here's this tools, I put it over here. This step, step, detect for Windows, you can get from the official website. It does download the zip file. So it's downloaded here. and extract to this uh, stack detect folder. I have a uh, stack detect and a stack break. Stack break, which means it can be used to find uh, Let's copy it to find those hidden information. For lab 06, here we have those export images, right? They are exported here. We can paste our stack detect towards here. Then we first use that detect, stack detect to to identify those image, which images, uh, which images contains hidden information, you can use this uh, command syntax like this. And inside, uh, we can go to that folder. Then we don't need to cd. Uh, it's okay. We go to that folder. Right? Cd to that uh, SOT twenty six and export, there are, you find those uh, JPEG, BMP, and our stack detect. So how do I run my stack detect? Stack detect, this is a the folder, then I run the program, stack detect .exe. Then specify the image, here you specify the image it will show the result whether it contains some uh, hidden information. We can use a star to later uh, detect hidden information on all these three files. 
Here you see all these three files. The first JPEG, we have a uh, hidden information, hidden with a software called invisible. And also this file, uh, allocated file, invisible. And uh, this one, BMP, it says not a JPEG file. So this step to tag on what's on JPEG file. And this one, we know there is a header in the JPEG. So we still want to, to try whether we can see it. How about if we add a, a extension ext to see whether it's correctly recovered. We can rename it to add a JPEG to our look. It looks like is, we add a dot JPEG, we, we get another image and it's readable. This is nice, right? And you see the appear 12. So from this map, what information could we get? Okay, now we, we see there are two files. It contains the invisible information. How do we find those invisible information? We can use this uh, stack uh, brick. Now, how do we use this brick? This brick, you can try help to see how to use it. Dash V, dash R, rules, dash F, word list, dash T, scheme, followed by the image. So you can specify a word list. We want to find a password called help. So you can put help inside a word list. Right? And you can, uh, I think it has the example here to detect, to extract as a content. Okay, we didn't see, uh, see it. Let's use a stack detect uh, this break. To break uh, the image, first one is this uh, tail F JPEG. Press enter to see no such file directory. We don't have uh, the rules. How do we specify the rules? You go to this uh, export folder. Yeah, you see we have a rules I, I here, right? When you check these rules, here are the rules for this uh, stack break. It used to generate a password. There's a rules. John the rip password crack. And uh, maybe with a better specify a word list. How could we create a word list? Inside this export folder, we can create a word list text file. Here we create a word list. Since we wanted to know uh, help is a password, we just type help inside. Then we run a command again. This time we can specify our more options. Dash R, the door. The door is uh, inside this uh, stack break folder or stack detect folder. Rules.ini. And the word list we just created. Then we followed by this uh, tail F, so the JPEG. Processed uh, one files found zero embeddings. So it uh, didn't find any hidden information from that file. So which means this report is looked as a false positive. Then let's try the next uh, image, this one, um, I look.
Okay, this one uh, again for the zero embeddings. And it's, it's a detect is called invisible. So with the stagnography tool is not, cannot be break by this step break. So we may use that uh, invisible to search invisible where we can find an invisible stagnography uh, tools. Actually, uh, you, you Google it, you will be able to find it. I would like to just download from our tools. You can download from its official uh, website. Here this uh, ET invisible secret. Okay, it's uh, downloaded. Control okay, this uh, download folder, showing folders. Here, I extract. Okay, we have an uh, installer. Okay, now I have this uh, file, we can continue uh, trial, only 15 days left. So we can use for only 15 days. We want to uh, unhide file, right? Go to our lab to find those two uh, exported file. Is an export. We can try all these three images to see whether it can find some hidden information. Now we need a password. So password we type that help and uh, show the password. Now we have so many uh, algorithm. Which one? decryption algorithm, which one we should use. We may try them one by one. Access denied, invite the value of a password or algorithm. Then we try the next one, to fish. No. Tell us for, no. So you can uh, try through this stuff to see which one you can uh, and uh, hide secrets. Okay, now then, then I, I chose that one, chose this uh, third one. Access denied to fish. Password uh, invite a uh, carrier file. Okay, let's see uh, how could we find which one is the, the algorithm it used. When we check here, we still have a password, left, right. So you may use this invisible secret tool to uncover those uh, 
hidden information. And we know that is a good time for our scan 24, right? Both of these passwords were tried and were unsuccessful. Then we see an uh, anonymous tip. HTM source to the left here and the right. So where we find this one? We will go through this uh, document to see where it is. Okay, you can use these two passwords. This uh, lefty two fish. In the real world, maybe you try by yourself, right? You try all these uh, algorithms. Lefty. Now you see we find a, a hidden information, John dot doc. So we can uh, uh, hide this one and save it to select the destination folder. We save it to our document in our lab 06, scan 26, this export, we save it at the same place, unhide. Uh, Okay, now it's uh, unhide it. You can go through this uh, document to see whether there are still some other useful information you can find. This is John dot doc. I open with the LibreOffice. Now the password. How about we try that help and good times left here and right and so on. I try help. Okay, it looks like help is the password. Now you can see the hidden information here. Okay, it looks like we completed all the tasks, all the achievements demonstrated in this demo. You may uh, use Linux foremost to try to uh, call those images to see whether you can call these three uh, images.